today I'm going to talk about constructions and the first one is pretty easy. There's a line segment here AB and we want to copy it and notice that the line segment has two endpoints and they should provide you with a straight line and if they don't you just have to pick a point to start at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the the compass endpoint at A and then I'm going to put the pencil where B ends and I'm going to make a loopy. I'm going to make an arc. And then because I put my end point here, I know where to start. And then I just repeat the arc. And then that's the line segment. If I want to call it A prime, B prime. And that's copying a line segment. It's that easy. Now, of course, they're not going to make it that easy on the regions. They may say something like copy this triangle over here. So what I'm going to do is, again, I, hopefully they'll give you a straight line to start with. I'm going to put C prime here because that's where I'm going to start. And I'm going to follow the same rules. I'm going to copy the endpoint. So I'm going to put one end of the compass at C. And then I'm going to expand it up to T and make my loop, make my arc. And I'm going to repeat it down here so I know that's where T is. But now I have to do it three times. So I'm going to start at T. And I'm going to push it into A and make a loop. So I know this is where my T is and I'm going to make an A. I'm going to make a loop where A should be. But now I have to go to C, go up to A, make another arc. So that intersects A. And then do it again here. And now I know exactly where to put my T prime and A prime. And now all I need is a straight edge. So then you just need a straight edge. You should really bring a ruler with you. Some kids have, um, they use their ID card during the test as their straight edge if they forget one. But even if you just use a straight piece of paper and you should be able to copy the triangle. The next one I'm gonna do is copy an angle. So again, they have to give you an angle to start with in order to copy it. So here's angle ABC and I'm going to locate the vertex and I'm going to put a point where I want my vertex to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the vertex and I'm just going to make an arc that goes through both the ray at the bottom and the other ray. It has to go through both rays and I'm going to repeat that here. We're not going to know where it goes straight through, so you can make it longer. But now we're going to measure the width of the angle. So I am going to go where it intersected on my ray at the bottom. I'm going to push it in so it intersects right here. And I'm going to repeat that. And then I know where to take my straight edge, where it intersects. and then I copied my angle. I'm gonna do that one more time. I'm gonna start at the vertex. I'm gonna make an arc that goes through both rays and there's no vertex here so I'm gonna place it wherever I want and I'm gonna make a bigger arc and now I have to measure the span of the angle so I'm gonna go where the bottom of the ray and try to find where it intersects the other ray and repeat it and that's where I know now to put the second ray. Now I'm going to bisect an angle and I'm going to take the end point and stick it at the vertex and I'm going to make an arc that goes through both rays. And then without moving the span or the width that I happen to choose, I'm going to go where it intersects at the bottom part of the ray. So I'm going to hop up and make another arc and hop on the other side and make another arc. And where it intersects, that's the angle bisector. And the angle bisector cuts an angle into congruent parts. Now if they give us a circle, 
There's several things they want you to know with the circle. One of them is make an inscribed hexagon. And the way I do that is I take my endpoint of my compass and I measure the width of my radius. So it's right here. I take it and put it from the point and then I put the pencil on the, the circumference of the circle. Then I lift it up and now I have the measurements on my compass of the radius. I start wherever I want and I just make an arc and then I hop onto the arc, make another arc, hop onto the arc, put, put the point on the arc and then make another um, arc here, then make another arc, put the point on, make another arc and I should have equally spaced six. One, two, three, four, five, Five, six. If I did it right, it should be six equally spaced um, arcs. And then all I have to do is connect them with the straight edge. One, two, three, four. There's many ways of doing this. It's just one way. Five, six. And now we have an inscribed hexagon. Okay, so now I'm going to inscribe an equilateral triangle inside a circle. So the first thing I have to do is once again measure the distance of the radius, which you're going to stick the point. You're going to stick the point at the center of the circle. And I'm going to stick the pencil on the circumference of the circle. So that's the width of the radius. I'm going to start wherever I want. And I'm going to hop along, and if I want, it might be easier to turn the paper. I'm going to stick the ends of the compass again where the arc I made was and make a new arc. Then pit, lift it, stick the, the um, compass again where I made the arc, make a new arc. And I'm going to go around until I'm back where I started. And if your compass stays still and you have a good compass, you should end up having six equally spaced arcs. And this looks pretty good. And now, for a hexagon, you have the six points, but we want an equilateral triangle, so we just do every other point. So this point, no. This point, no. This point. And then we just take our ruler, and we connect the dots, and the equilateral triangle has three congruent sides, and the angles are each 60 degrees each. So if they wanted you to construct a 60-degree angle, you could also inscribe a triangle inside a circle and then label it 60 degrees. And don't forget, I already taught you how to do the angle bisector. If they wanted a 30 degree angle, you could start at one of the vert vertexes and make your arc that goes through both the rays that form that angle, then hop up at both the rays and repeat that without moving the compass. And then we could stick the line going through where the two arcs intersected, and that would be an angle bisector or a 30-degree angle. They haven't asked that yet, though. Now I'm going to inscribe a square inside a circle. First, you have to draw the diameter. So I like to draw my diameter across. And then what you have to do is form the perpendicular bisector. And to do that, you put the compass at the ends, not at the center like we did for everything else. You put it at the ends and go more than halfway. You want to go past the you know, the center and make a big arc. Now you're going to lift it without moving it, whatever span you open it to, go to the other side and make another arc. And that's called the perpendicular bisector. And where the two arcs intersect, you're going to draw the line and now you have the other diameter that's going through the center. Label your four points and now you're able to connect them. And now we have a square, we have 90 degree angles, we have 45 degree angles if we want to do 90 degree angle right there. Now this is the radius and if I want to draw a line tangent to the radius what I'm going to do is measure the length of the radius, draw a loopy, it should be right on the circle, and I'm going to repeat it one more time. So I'm going to stick the end of the compass on the edge of the circle and make 
a second radius and expand it. And now I can find the perpendicular bisector because if I want to draw a line tangent to the circle, you, you have to know by definition it forms a 90 degree angle. So now I could use this end point and go more than halfway and make an arc. And where the end point is here, go more than halfway, make an arc. And then you could just take this, draw a line, and there's your 90 degree angle. And if you have a tangent and a diameter or a tangent and a radii, it forms a 90 degree angle. Now what if I want to find the median, the median connecting to AB on this triangle? Well the median connects at the midpoint, so we know now to take the compass, go more than halfway so you're going to have to eyeball it because we're going to find the perpendicular bisector because by definition the bisector uh, cuts the line segment into congruent parts. So we could tell right here is where the midpoint is, where it's, it has congruent parts, but the median goes from the vertex on the other side of the triangle to the midpoint. So right here is the median. I could now maybe construct the median to side BC. So when, again, I have to find the end point of BC. I'm going to go more than halfway, make an arc. And whatever span I kept it to, I don't change it. I go to the other side, make my arc. And right here is where it connects. So that is the midpoint. And then I have to know I'm going from the vertex to that midpoint, and that would be the median. Now let's just say I want to form the altitude. The altitude forms a 90 degree angle. And the way I'm going to do this, this is an obtuse triangle, I personally like to extend the bottom of my triangle. Well, I have to do it a little more accurate. I like to buy the see-through rulers so I can see what I'm doing. I guess that's good enough. And you have to start at the vertex of the triangle, so that's a point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the compass end point there, and I have to make an arc that goes through two parts of that bottom line. And that's why I extended it, because now it went through over here and over here. And without moving the span, keeping it what I opened it up to, I'm going to put the compass end point here and make another arc. And I could do it again on the other side, make another arc. And where they intersect, that's where you go from the vertex down to where it intersected. And that's your altitude or 90 degree angle. Now, I could do this with a trapezoid. And you know a trapezoid. Okay, here I have a trapezoid. And I want to draw the altitude. So again, I prefer to extend the bottom line as long as I can. Okay, now I'm going to draw the altitude from this trapezoid here. So I'm going to stick my compass endpoint at the vertice here. And I am going to make an arc that goes through two parts of the base here, and that's why I always extend the line, because then without moving it, whatever span I had it on, I'm going to take the end point and make another arc, lift it, go to the other end point, make another arc, lift it, and then I know to just draw a line from where I started straight down, where it intersects, and that will be your altitude. Okay, now I am going to draw a line parallel to this line through that point. So the first thing you're going to do is draw a transversal, which is a slanted line. The goal is to make an angle 
at the bottom with the line that's parallel. And then we're going to copy this angle. So put the compass at the vertex, make an arc that goes through both rays of that angle that we just formed. Use the P as the new vertex and repeat the same arc. And we, we can make it long, you know, more uh, longer arc since we're not going to know where it ends. But to measure the angle span, you have to go to the bottom part of the ray, put the arc, put the point there and see where it intersects. And I think I have to go in a little more. Okay, now I have the span. Now here I have to go backwards because I'm not sure where it's going to intersect. So I'm going to do that. And then I know where it intersected should be parallel through point P. And it looks like it's not exact. So I should redo it again. The goal is this part and this part should intersect. So I'll try it one more time, but we'll keep that up there because it's good practice. Uh, point P. I'll have a line like this. This is what will be given. I have to draw a transversal. Now I'm going to copy the angle. I put my compass at the vertex and I make an arc. I'm going to repeat it with P, but I'm going to make a longer arc because I'm not sure where it's going to intersect. Then I go here to measure the, the width of the angle. And I have to do it upside down. That's what you have to remember about this. And where it intersects is where you draw that line. And this one seems to be more perfect. And now my two lines are parallel, and these are called corresponding angles. If corresponding angles are equal, the lines are parallel. I have not seen this one on the regions yet. Oh, the kids told me they saw one of these recently on a field test. So uh, it's probably going to be on a test soon since they had this one on the field test. And I think I covered all of the constructions. I hope I helped.